Hello, welcome to the podcast. My name is Scotch. I'm your host. And today on this episode, we have Olivia Van Rye, uh, photographer, filmmaker, and uh, yeah, visual extraordinaire. Um, <laughs> I've, I've followed... So welcome. Say hello, Olivia. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> nice to nice to be chatting with you. Super excited nice to, to be, be on chatting here with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having. Uh, thank you for coming on. Um, <laughs> so, uh, can you can you give the audience listening uh, a little background on like what you do? Sure. Yeah. So, um, started out doing mainly just photography and, and video um, back in, what was it, like 2014. So like I was, I was a senior in high school at that time and that's kind of when I, I picked it all up. Um, in high school we had um, like an AP art class. I, don't, I think that's like a nationwide thing, right? Like a, the yeah. AP classes. <laughs> so I was, I was in that and, and picked like photography for my concentration. You know, I, I took graphic design as well. And we did like those pinhole camera things where like you make them out of those little boxes. And I just thought it was like so cool. And we had a dark room at my school. So I, you know, was super involved in that and messed around with Photoshop. So then, you know, I just sort of picked up a camera and I, um, I think my first camera was like a, a Canon 60D. I think that's what okay. it was. And so I had that for like two or three years and was just rocking with that. Um, so I did like my whole concentration on photography in high school. Um, that was really awesome. I fell in love with it. And then um, after I graduated um, high school, I, I knew I didn't like want to go to college. Like my whole high school career, I was like, this is not for me. I don't want this. Like <laughs> The town, the town I grew up in, though, is one of those towns where everybody is like, where are you going to college? Oh, my God. Like, my daughter got into Harvard. Like, where did you? It's like, okay, that's just Where did you grow high. up? Uh, West Hartford, Connecticut. Central Connecticut. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I love where I'm from, for sure. But it definitely was, you know, kind of that vibe, like, who got into a cooler college and that type of thing. So, <laughs> you know, I, I knew from a young age that just, like, wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, and my parents, you know, supported that and they were totally fine with that, which I'm definitely thankful for because um, I know a lot of other people's parents might not have been that supportive, I guess, of that path. Mm. Um, but I actually was was modeling for the first like two years after um, high school. That was like what I really, really, really wanted to do. So throughout the wow. summer, like act uh, after I graduated, I was like, this is what I'm just going to commit myself to. So um, you know, reached out to all the agencies in New York City, just like cold calling, cold emailing. And I finally got um, a response back from, from an age or like a few agencies. And I went, I was going in and out of the city quite often, probably like once every two weeks, just on the train to meet with people and this and that, and, um, ended up signing like with, um, an agency, like in New York. So I was 18 and then ended up moving to New York, like by myself. And I was there for like four or five months. Um, and it was, extremely difficult. The modeling industry is no joke. Um, I don't know if it's really <laughs> changed much since then, like 2015, but my God, back in, back when I was there, it was so brutal, just, you know, dieting and how much, how oh, many man. inches can you lose off of your waist and your hips and this diet and that diet go vegan. No, this diet works better. So that was kind of my life for like a year and a half. So at that time, I had like sold my camera and I was like, I need to pay for rent somehow, you know, so I, I didn't even have a camera at that time. And, um, you know, fast forward, like, I don't know, maybe six months, I finally moved home and I was like, this is not for me. I literally one day was like, I cannot do this for one more day. And I literally packed my bags that day and called my mom and I was like, I'm taking a bus home. And And at that time, a few of my friends like went to college in New York and they just like came to my apartment and like helped me move out and and I got on a wow. bus and didn't really look back since so that was that was pretty crazy but you know when you have a gut feeling that this just isn't for you you kind of just need to you know get out of there um so back to photography after that um I was home for like a few months and um I started just like working as a host at like a restaurant a local restaurant and I was like, I am so not the type of person that like can work in that environment. So I was just like going <laughs> crazy. I was like, I cannot, like, this is not going to be my life. Like 
all my friends were having so much fun like in college and I was like, oh my God, did I make like the biggest mistake of my life? Like, what am I doing? Mm. I'm a freaking hostess right now, like at a restaurant, like, you know, this is not for me. So uh, a friend of mine, his name is Garrett. He like, um, he went to college, I think in Maine, but it was the summertime at this point. And um, he had like an internship in New York and and we were just chatting and he had like picked up music photography, like, and he was just going to shows and like taking photos and reaching out to, you know, management of, you know, ex artist and they would let him in and give him a photo pass. And he was like, Hey, you should come to New York. And like, we should just shoot, you know, a show or whatever. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So I don't remember where I got the camera. I don't know if I bought one back at that point, but I went to New York and went to a show with him. And like, that was when my whole life just like changed. I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, at that point, I didn't even know that this was an option for a career. Yeah. And I was like, this is insane that this can be like my life. And just sort of the same mentality I had with modeling. I was like, okay, from here on out, like I'm going to reach out to everybody's management, to every wow. venue, to every promoter. Like I'm going to do this. And so Dude, I just that's kind badass. Of, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, that's really badass. That's so, awesome. Um, did you have a moment like was it right there in that club or uh, that concert that first night where you were like, mm -hmm. I want to do this? Or was it a couple days past or like for me, I know I I was photographing in a club for like months in the Yost Theater in mm -hmm. Orange County. Right. And um, Ooh, shout out uh, Yost. <laughs> and oh, yeah, it's not there anymore. Um, <laughs> I know. Sad. I know. Um, I was, I was photographing this DJ Brazabel and I was working there for like mm -hmm. four months. And I remember I got one photo of her with her hair up and like her hair was like flowing in the air and she was mid jump. And I was like, I looked down at that picture and I just got this like wave of ecstasy. And I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, I want to be doing this for the rest of my life. Right. Um, was it something like that or was it just what was the feeling and was it right then and there or did it take a while to get there? Um, I think it was like pretty instant. I, I don't know if it was more of like the feeling of just being at a concert and being like, this is like so cool. I didn't even know that I could use something that I love and like create a life out of it. I think it was just mm. that moment where I was just like, I don't know, like taken aback that this could be a career, you know, like I, and then I was looking back at the photos and I was like, wow, these are, you know, good. Like I, at that point I just had like a little 50 millimeter, you know, Canon nifty 50 on my, yep. on my, um, uh, on the body of the camera. And that was all I was working with, but I just like was looking at them and I was like, whoa, these are pretty cool. Like, and then that just <laughs> sort of fueled me to, to try to shoot more. Um, and at that time also I was shooting like a lot of friends, like skateboarding and stuff and snowboarding. Actually, I, I think I left that out, but I, I, I was like a snowboard instructor for like three years. That mm. was like my first ever job. And, and I brought my camera there and it was just like shooting friends and stuff like that. And I just loved like that energy. Like I'm such a person that likes to be just kind of like a fly on the wall, but the camera was sort of my way to like involve myself, I guess, if that makes sense. And, yep. and, and show people, you know, the photos and stuff that I was proud of. So I don't know if it was necessarily like a photo that I saw that I took that I was like, wow, this is it for me, but it was just that overall feeling. And just, I just loved the entire, the entire atmosphere and just being able to help artists or athletes or whatever, just sort of capture their lives. I don't know. Something about that was just so like interesting to me and fun. Yeah. And you mentioned something there super interesting to me is like, you felt like, um, a fly on the wall, right? Is yeah, that, yeah. is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, have you, have you like, um, changed that throughout, like, has that feeling changed for you throughout your career? Like, are you able to involve yourself easier or do you lean on the camera to involve yourself um, as you felt like you were doing uh, earlier in your career? Um, I still feel that I lean on my camera for sure. Like I, I'm, I don't know. I'm a pretty shy person. Like um, 
when I first meet people. And then like, once you get to know me, I feel like I'm pretty outgoing, but Mm -hmm. I feel that my camera is sort of almost like a security blanket in a way. And I'm like, Oh, if I have this, like that's sort of my way that I can relate to people and start up a conversation or that type of thing. Like it it just sort of gives me like a a purpose, I guess, like if that makes sense, like, Oh, I have my camera. I, I know I can take cool photos and videos and that's kind of my thing, you know? Um, but yeah, I definitely still have that same like fly on the wall mentality <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I just I love that feeling. Yeah. 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 Uh for me as well as like that's that's what really brought me there is like I can I never really fit in and like so there was like uh if I had a camera, I had a purpose for being mm-hmm. there. And like I could go up to that group and like quote unquote, hang out, but also like take their picture and like have Mm. something that we can talk about. Um, So for me, it was also that like, it it was this involvement and the security blanket and um, yeah, yeah. So after that, after you found in the nightclubs, uh, what happened after that? Were you still in Connecticut? Okay. Yeah. So after that, um, you know, first show in New York, I was just like I said, emailing people. Um, at that time, Webster Hall in New York was like the most iconic venue ever. Like it's since mm. been shut down and like reopened. I haven't been since. So I don't know what like the vibe is now, but that was like the venue. Like I wanted to go to that venue like every single weekend. So um, I've, I shot a ton of shows there. Like just there were times where like I would buy a ticket to the show and like sneak my camera in. Like that was like the hustle that I was on for a while was just like trying to get my camera in and like taking photos and then like editing them and then trying to like send them off to the artist, you know? Um, yeah. So at that time too, um, this actually ties into America. I was just DMing artists being like, Hey, I see that you're, sh- you know, playing in Connecticut or Boston or Philly or New York. Cause those were all pretty close to where I, you know, lived. Um, and I, I DM'd Americo on Instagram, Boombox Cartel, and I was like, hey, you know, at that time he put out this song, Be To You, and I was like, hey, I love this song. Um, and I see that you're playing at this venue called The Middle East in Boston. Like, would I be able to come and shoot your show? Like, I'm a photographer, you know, whatever my, my spiel was at the time. And <laughs> he answered and um, was like, yeah, let me talk to my manager or whatever. And then... Um, like I didn't hear anything from him. So I was like, Oh my God, like I, you know, what did I do wrong? This and that. And so I ended up just going through (laughs) the promoter for that show. And I was like, Hey, can you please give me a photo pass or whatever? And somehow I ended up getting in like around America, like, which is kind of funny because like to this day, he's like the worst texter ever and like (laughs) messenger. So it just kind of prefaced future, but um, (laughs) yeah, so I got into the show and it was like, it's like the middle East is like this, it's almost, it's like a basement, like it's like the basement of a restaurant, but I guess it's like a super iconic venue in the U S which is pretty cool, (laughs) but it's like literally a basement of a restaurant. And so like, I was like taking pictures of, you know, during his set. And then afterwards, um, like he was, he was opening for mayhem and anti-serum like on their tour. So like, you know, he had obviously played and the headliners were on or whatever. And we were literally just like chatting And he was like, hey, like, what lens is that on your camera? I don't know if that was, like, his pickup line or whatever, but it's pretty funny to look back on that. But, like, he is super into photography, too. So that was just something that we, like, initially connected on. Um, Yeah. And literally, like, that whole night we were just, like, talking. And funny enough, like, I was going to shoot his show the next night in Philadelphia, like, regardless of if, you know, I had even talked to him or not, like – I hung out with people that like were super into EDM too. So they were just sort of, you know, following the tour or whatever. So I was just like, why not? I'm just going to bring my camera and go along for the ride. So the next night, you know, I saw him in Philly and then we just like really hit it off. Like that night we saw each other and it just, you know, I don't know. Like when you know, you know, and it's like, I'm so such like a non-believer in that. And I just completely felt that way that night. So Four when you know, you know yeah. about uh, um, the relationship, like just, you know, gotcha. America liking him <laughs> that. And here we are four and a half years later. But wow. Yeah. Um, but he he, you know, I after meeting him, like everything happened very quickly. And that was sort of 
a big jump start into my career because as his career grew, my career grew because, you know, he was doing bigger shows. We were touring together. I was photographing more. I was editing. You know, I was practicing my own craft, like whether we traveled to New York or, you know, Australia, whatever. Like I, I've always loved street photography and just sort of taking pictures of strangers as creepy as that sounds. But I just love that. So it gave me a chance to, to grow in that space as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you tap into something different when you're traveling into a new city or country compared to like walking down the street and you live in LA now, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I live in okay. LA. Yeah. So do you tap into um, something different? Like, uh, for me, I know I get so in the moment and like everything is just so beautiful to me, even if it's just like a piece right. of trash on the ground, but that's only when I'm out yeah. of the state of California. Whenever I'm in right. California, I'm just like, la da 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 da. it's all normal. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah. Yeah. I definitely think so. Um, yeah. I mean, just going to places like Asia and like, you know, Europe even, it's just like so different from the U S and like the first couple of years when we were doing it, I was literally like a kid in a candy store, like everything <laughs> I wanted to just take photos of and like edit. And that was like my whole, um, thing. Like I, yeah, I love it so much still like to this day, but I I'm noticing like more so like I'm doing a lot of like iPhone photos, like when we travel, um, you know, out of the state or out of the country. Like, I, I don't know what it is, but I've just like recently become obsessed with like iPhone photos and editing on my phone for, for mm. like, you know, Instagram stories and just simple stuff like that. But I just think it's cool to kind of turn, turn an iPhone photo into something, you know, more than just that for sure. Right. Right. Do you use Visco um, or what do you use? I actually don't. I, I, uh, sometimes I'll use Visco, but there's an app that I love called Hipstamatic. Hipstamatic. Um, it's, I've like been on this app for like six years. Like, and I, <laughs> and I recently remembered that it like existed like a year and a half ago. And I, that just opened up so many doors for me. This is like my favorite app ever. Like I'm on this thing, like probably every day, but it's, it's definitely my favorite app. Um, wow. And there's awesome. a couple other ones that like I'll sift through, you know, I, I could spend hours just editing one photo like on my phone. So I'm kind of obsessive, but <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so after you guys had that one night and where was it? Philadelphia mm -hmm. where you hit it off. Austin and Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did he say like, come be my photographer or come be my lady or like what happened there? <laughs> <laughs> so after that night, I, he had to catch a flight. I don't remember where his next show was, but then I was heading home like with my friends. So, um, you know, we were texting just and FaceTiming like constantly, like it literally had been as if we knew each other for, for years, you know? So wow. after that time, um, I think it was like a month or so that, that went pat that went by and, um, he was like, I want to fly to New York. Like, let's stay, you know, I'm going to get a hotel for like a week and we're just going to hang out and, you know, chill. So that happened. We went to New York for like a week. Um, and that was like the most amazing time. Like we were just in a hotel and like, um, at that time, like Prince Fox lived in New York, who's a really close friend of ours. And like Chapa Dunks lived over there and Jester was over there at that time. Mm. And like, we were all just like chilling and like laughing and hanging out and just going to really cool restaurants. So that was like a really cool, you know, week. And then after that, he had like a show in Detroit, like on the tail end of that, that trip in New York and, or no, sorry. He went to Connecticut to meet my family after that week. So, you know, big Whoa. steps here, but oh my yeah, God. So that went really well. yeah it, I'm telling you it happened very quickly, but he met my family and we stayed there for like a couple of days and then he had a show in Detroit and was like, hey, do you want to come to Detroit? Just like, why not? And take photos of this show. And I was like, uh, sure. And at that point, like, I literally hadn't flown since I was like two years old. So I was like 19 at this mm. point and I hadn't flown. And I was like such a nervous like flyer. Like I was very nervous about it, but like I did it. And, you know, it was obviously fine <laughs> here to tell the tale, but <laughs> that, that was kind of it. And, and after that, I think like another month went by or no, Hold on. Sorry. I'm missing very important details here. When we got to the airport after that Detroit show, he was like, do you want to be my girlfriend? And I was like, you know, yes, of course. And you know, the rest is history, but 
I went home for like a month and then I flew out to LA to like visit him. And then it wasn't even officially me like moving out there, but I just like went to visit and then I really just like never went back. Like obviously I visit my family very often, but never went back meaning like, you know, that was the move, I guess. So yeah, wow. that, that's how I ended up out here in LA. Holy cow. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Moved and away. life in LA, how's it been? It's been great. Um, it's, it's awesome. It's super chill. It definitely took me, I feel like it took me like two or three years to really like adapt to being out here. Like I am so close to my family and like being away from them is still hard, but like it was really, really hard for the first like two or three years. Like whenever I would go home and like leave, you know, like I would cry. Like it, it was like super mm. emotional for me. Um, still is, but I've definitely you know, LA definitely is feeling more home-like, um, you know, I, but it's cool. I, I really like it. I'm like such a New York girl and like such an East Coast girl. And I think I always will be, but you know, LA is definitely, I, I can't complain. It's, it's super cool here. And, and we live in like a, like a very suburban like neighborhood. So it definitely feels more, you know, like where I grew up versus living in like downtown LA or something. I don't know if I would be able to get used to that. <laughs> So yeah, I don't think I will be either. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's hectic down there. Yeah. Yeah. So um when it comes to your work, like who are your biggest influences? Who are the photographers? I, or so, or it could be like videographers or directors or whatever, where you're like so intensely either obsessed with or uh, you know, you just love their style so much. Yeah, there are so many. I'll start. I'll start saying that. Like, I, I, I don't want to like exclude anybody. Obviously, I love your work a ton. But I'm, I'm gonna Thank say you. the people that just kind of come to the front of my mind. The first person that I ever like looked up to was Caesar Sebastian. Yeah, um, I see that. Yeah, he was like he was the first like Instagram or not Instagram music photographer that I kind of found on Instagram and really like whose style like resonated with me. And I was like, these colors, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Like my goal was to just kind of be able to create colors that like I'd never seen. So mm. Caesar was absolutely my biggest influence. I even DM'd him like um, early, early on and he, you know, invited me out to shoot like a Steve Aoki show in Connecticut at like one of the um, casinos out there. Um, so that was incredible. That was definitely like a huge moment in my career too, just like being able to shoot, you know, a show like that and almost be kind of mentored by Caesar and just sort of ask him questions. So that was, you know, incredible. And um, to this day, he's definitely a huge influence and I am just obsessed with everything he does. Um, mm. Um, who else? This girl, Kat in NYC on Instagram. I don't know if you've seen her work. No. Um, she's an amazing, like, portrait photographer based in New York. I love her colors so, so much. Like, I'm looking on her Instagram now. If you scroll back a bit more, there's more of, like, you know, some deeper colors. Recently, it's just sort of been more natural stuff, but obsessed with her stuff um, always. How do you spell, cat like... It's um, it's K A T underscore in underscore N Y C. That's her, her Instagram handle. Let me know if you see her. Dope, yeah. She's awesome. She's super cool. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. And then um. Oh, these are wise, sick! Wow. Yeah, they're they're insane. She like shoots on a Fuji film, like digital camera, which is super cool. And I think she, I like. I am like such a person where I'll try to not copy someone's work, but I'll work so hard to try to get it to look like that. And then in that process, I kind of find my own like style, mm. but I figured out that she uses like hipstamatic to edit a lot of her photos. Oh shit. Oh damn. So I was like, oh my <laughs> God, it makes so much sense to me now, which is pretty funny. But, um, yeah, she's amazing. And then, um, in the video realm, um, Charlie Chiv team who does um, uh, like all the DJ Snake and Pardon My French yeah. stuff. Um, yeah. Are you familiar with his Instagram? He's definitely one of my biggest influences for video. 
Um, I just and what about I, it? When, what what about his work? Yeah, well, you? I'm. I really like like simple stuff, especially when it comes to video. Like, I um, I'm trying to think how to describe it. Like he. His, his work looks like it's like a documentary, like just the, even in his like simple recap videos, like it looks like a documentary. And I just, I hadn't really seen that elsewhere. Like, um, and I was just so obsessed with like the, his coloring and his cuts and just camera motions. And, and I was like, um, yeah, I just really used that like kind of as an influence and inspiration um, towards my work. And, and I was able to shoot a DJ Snake show I think it was either 2016 or 2017 in New York um, at like the Hudson Yards, which is like a massive like warehouse. Um, Charlie and then Anthony, who also does a lot of the part of my French stuff, had invited me out to, you know, help out. And that was incredible Dude. just to watch people that you look up to like work. Like, I don't think there's any like greater gift is just to watch people work, I guess, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that was pretty insane for sure just to to watch that and to watch I don't know just to even watch where people stand and kind of camp out to like take their photos or videos or just the angles they get like it's just so so interesting to me um so I those are definitely the top people that come to my mind there's so many like painters and graphic designers and people on Instagram too that I'm just like obsessed with that just give me so much inspiration um as well mm. but those are definitely the people that, that come to mind first. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love Kat and NYC. Oh my gosh. Her photos. Yeah, I can definitely I see like the the grain from mm. both of your your images. Like what I love most about your images are well, I mean, it's it's all amazing, but uh mm -hmm. I love how much grain, like how much you put focus on the grain and uh right or noise or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. It just adds so much to it. Mm, I and also that. your coloring's awesome too. <laughs> Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so good job. Thank Snaps you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So where are you at now in your career? I mean, besides being in quarantine and yeah. everything being canceled. Right. Everything being canceled and being in quarantine. So <laughs> right now, I mean, I guess I'll just talk about like what I've maybe been up to the past like few months. Um, I um, do all of the creative direction for Boombox now. Um, so that means like Whoa. every video that comes out like is either me editing it slash filming it or, you know, I'll oversee all the work that our editors will work on all of the um the artworks is me either making it or again, overseeing it or kind of directing it with the artist. Um, literally everything that's like creative from Boombox, like I like have a part in it, which is super, super cool. And I, I, over, over the course of like a year or two, I've realized how much I really like being in that kind of director's seat. Um, mm. I just think it's really enjoyable to kind of, I don't know, grow a piece of artwork or grow, you know, a video or photo, whatever we're working on and just sort of getting it to a place where it's, you know, final. Like I just, I, I really like that process. Um, as well as uh, obviously I'm doing all of his photos from, you know, shows and whatnot. Um, so that's um, super fun and just pretty much what I do like on a daily basis. And then um, I've also been working with Westbrook um, pretty often, which is Will Smith's production company. Um, oh yeah. Uh, huh. I yeah, totally forgot. So, You're working with Jada, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jada. And Dude, I've done some what is that Will. like? It's, it's awesome. Like I don't even feel like I like deserve to be in a position to like work <laughs> on some of this stuff, but it's incredible. Like Jas Davis and yeah. Liam Underwood, like fully put me onto that. So I got to shout them out. Um, just the fact that they thought of me was, was really, really awesome. Um, and I'm super thankful for that. Um, yeah, it's just, um, I've been doing some like behind the scenes work, just some, some of their, you know, social media content, just some like photos and stuff for them. 
I've been doing some graphic design for them here and there, which is really cool. Um, I want to ask how it is working with a significant other in this industry mm -hmm. where, you know, it's, it's long hours and long travel mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. How, how have you guys made that work? What's the advantages? Like, are you having just the best time ever? Mm -hmm. Uh, what are challenges that you guys get through? Um, and yeah, yeah. How, how is it generally? Yeah, generally it's really good. Like I would say 80% of the time it's like perfect and, you know, just go with the flow, traveling, you know, shows, whatever. Um, obviously all couples argue, all business, uh, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like business partners argue. So we definitely do have a decent amount of that for sure. Um, but over the years, like we've learned with each other, just kind of how to get over the arguments like pretty quickly. Um, mm -hmm. so that's something that I've just been pretty proud of both of us for just even over the past year. Um, both personally, like in our relationship and, you know, business wise, like working together. Um, it's just finding the right way to like talk to each other. Um, and that's something that I've kind of learned from Americo is that everybody, you know, you kind of need to tailor the way you talk to certain people in a certain way. And for me, I've just sort of like in the past, I'm like, Oh, that's not true. Like, I'm just going to talk to everybody the same. Like, why would I need to <laughs> You know, change the way I talk to someone that seems so unfair but just being around like other people in the business and the industry and just people that you know we hire to come onto a project like it's so true like you really if you want to get things done like you really need to talk to people in a certain way in order to get that done and and that's something that I've for sure learned from America because he's really really good at that and and mm. I've taken that and um you know, use that with other people and also use that with our relationship and, and just between us. So that's definitely really big and just kind of finding time to like get space. Like while we are, like we are literally together every single day. Like I think maybe out of the year we, we spend like a total of 14 days apart. Like oh honestly, my God. Wow. yeah. So we're together like all the time. Like and I love it. Like, I really don't even get sick of him, like, which is pretty crazy. Cause I feel like, I don't know, like if it was anybody else, I would get sick of them. But, um, so I guess that's a positive, right? Like after four and a half years, like I'm not tired of him yet. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> but wow, that's yeah, beautiful. Just, like, yeah, just like learning to get like space where it's needed. And just even, you know, if we're in Tokyo or whatever, like, going for a walk, like him going for a walk or going downstairs or going to a coffee shop, like, you know, by himself or with our tour manager or whatever. And just like me staying in the room, like little ways to just sort of find space for, for ourselves, mm -hmm. I guess, um, is definitely a, a key to making it work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really good. Like I, I wouldn't change anything for sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. another question about another relationship. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. what your relationship with Instagram is. Oh, Instagram <laughs> as a photographer. I, yeah. <laughs> I, so at the be like at the beginning of my career, like Instagram was everything to me. And like, <laughs> just to preface this, like, I love Instagram. Like I really do. Like I have tailored my feed where I only follow like positive people. I only follow amazing, you know, um, creatives, photographers, graphic designers, whatever. So like, I love Instagram. Like I am not a hater of Instagram at all, but I think the problem with Instagram for me is just a, a personal thing. What I was saying before, where it's like, if something's not perfect or something's not planned out, like I'm not going to post it. And, mm. and I think that's like where my downfall is like, even looking at my feet, I literally haven't posted in three months. Like, that's crazy. I, I don't mm. know why I do that. Like, cause I, I, I have so much stuff that I would like to post. I'm just like such a freak about, okay, I need to plan out like what's going to go where, how is it going to look in my feed? And then I think I just get so overwhelmed by that, that that's what stops me from posting at all. Yeah. So it's like, it's my own like fault, I guess. Um, I, um, I do post on my Instagram story probably like once a day, if not once every other day, like I really like Instagram story. Cause it feels like 
less of a commitment, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's gone in 24 hours. Like, you know, it's a cool photo and then that's it. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I love Instagram. I wish I posted more. I just get overwhelmed by the idea of, of having to plan out things and, and just sort of sifting through stuff that piles up after months and months, you know, I haven't posted in three months. It's like, Oh my God, there's been so much that happened in three months. Now I have to go back and now I have to, Oh my God. And it just overwhelms me. So I just procrastinate and push it off. And and here we are three months later. So (laughs) (laughs) that's, that's pretty much my process. But um, I am right there with you in that boat. Um, Yeah. I mean, my Instagram feed used to be like a, Like you go to the grid and it's all like one solid flowy picture when Mm -hmm. you start scrolling and it's like that took for fucking ever. And then I I just like it to look a little bit neat, Uh, like have each row of three like Mm -hmm. be comprised of like the same tones, the same colors or like the same subject. And like, yeah, I, I really wish I couldn't that I didn't care. Yeah. Um, then maybe something will be posted but yeah I'm right there with you I haven't posted in a while either and uh yeah things are just getting backed up and that's okay yeah. um yeah I'm not gonna beat myself over that um right cool so yeah. your work right now mm-hmm. is quarantined uh <laughs> off limits <laughs> yeah so uh when we get out of this like oh or while we're in this right now, like, have you had ideas of things that you want to be doing or like, uh, are you staying creative in different ways, like taking on new, new hobbies or anything like that, or, or, or new ideas coming to you of, of things that you want to do in the future? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, again, am putting so much pressure on myself. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, this is a quarantine. We have like four weeks or whatever. I need to do something like incredible, right? Like that's, you know, I, like if I don't, if I don't save the world, like then I failed. Like that's just sort of the expectation I put like on my shoulders, which is terrible. But a goal that I would like to accomplish is actually to post on my Instagram. I like had this idea where I'm like, okay, maybe this can be the time where I kind of do a little recap like on my feed and like make it a thing where I sort of post some of my favorite, you know, graphics or photos or videos, whatever it has been for like the past Mm. six months. So that I think is a goal that I've been procrastinating even for the past eight days, but (laughs) maybe this talk will inspire me to do it tonight, but that is definitely something I want to (laughs) work on. And also updating my website, like that is such a huge undertaking. I'm like so stressed out about it Mm. because I haven't updated my website, I think since like 2016. So like the amount that's happened since then and the amount of photos I'm going to have to sift through since then, I'm like super overwhelmed over, but I would love to update my website. Yeah. Um, So yeah, those are two, two like personal things. And then, um, you know, the boombox stuff like hasn't stopped, um, during this whole quarantine thing. So, you know, we're working on, he's got a bunch of music coming out. So we, I mean, I am working on, um, artworks. I'm working on videos for his songs. Um, we're hoping to do a couple music videos. So we're just, you know, speaking Mm -hmm. with some directors about that. Um, so yeah, merch stuff. Um, that's sort of like the, the daily thing. Um, I'm working with this really amazing, um, illustrator. Um, her Instagram is Julia. Let's see if I can pronounce her last name. Sabaleva illustration. Um, so she's awesome. And, and we've just been going back and forth for the past like six weeks of just like, you know, the tour artwork and the, the, um, upcoming single artworks and stuff like that. So so that's been really fun um, wow. to do as well. Yeah. Okay. So you have your plate full basically. Yeah, I would corner. say so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But definitely still a lot of downtime for sure. <laughs> okay, so I, cool. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Trying to, um, yeah. Like I said, at the beginning of this, we just got new like hangers for the closet. That's like the lamest thing ever, <laughs> but trying to like organize closet. <laughs> like clean stuff out like that's I've been wanting to kind of redecorate our bedroom for a while so I guess there's no better time than now to keep that going 
So that's what I'm kind of working on too. Um, we've been eating like way healthier the past like three weeks. So that's been really cool to like be home and finally have time to like cook and like go to the grocery store. I mean, given that there's things in the grocery store right now, but <laughs> you know, cook things, do recipes, just like eat healthy, just like watch what we're eating. Like before three weeks ago, like, we ate out like almost every day and yeah. kind of didn't have a care in the world about like what was really going in our bodies. I mean, we weren't eating like McDonald's by any means, but you know, just like going to a local restaurant, like it's so much better to just kind of eat at home and, and just watch what you're eating and watching your portions. So yeah. definitely have been feeling a lot better since then, which is great. Um, so yeah, just kind of focusing on stuff like that, which has been really nice. Wow. And that I is really, a lot. That's yeah, good, though. That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, I'm, I, I keep telling America I want to adopt a cat, but I don't know <sighs> if that's really realistic. I want to adopt a dog so badly. <sighs> Me too. I want a dog or a cat. Literally any animal. Yeah, just, but right wow. now, right now seems like the good time. I was just talking about this yesterday with my roommates. Like right yeah. now seems like such a good time, and it's like yeah. I have nothing to do. I'm inside all day. Like I want a right. dog. But then mm -hmm. once this all ends and music yeah. festivals start popping up, it's like, I'm never going to be home again. Yeah, so. that's, yeah, that's literally <laughs> what I'm like thinking. So I'm, I don't know. I was like on the website last night, just like looking at all like cute cats. And I was like, oh my God, I need this. <laughs> we'll see. So they also have an option to foster if you can yeah. only do it for a little bit during this. I saw that, but I'm like, I, I don't know if I could foster. I would definitely adopt it at the end. Like, no <laughs> doubt. So, like I'll be like, yeah, I'm like going to foster for three weeks. Like I know I'm going to adopt that cat. After the three weeks. <laughs> no doubt about it. But uh, I, I definitely considered that for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. Uh, you were talking about getting other directors for the film uh, or, mm -hmm. or for the music videos. Uh, yeah. And I wondered, I saw one of your music videos that you did for uh, Americo and uh, it's with the guy in the hotel. Yeah. In yeah, the motel. yeah. And like, yeah. that is stunning. And so I'm kind of wondering, like, why don't you just do it? Like, do you have a preference not to do it? Would you rather have another part in it? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much. That means yeah. a lot. Um we, I don't know, I, like him, Americo and his managers were like, Olivia, why don't you just direct it? And I, I don't know, like I'm so, I don't know, like I said, I'm shy and I don't, mm. this, like, I, I definitely have like imposter syndrome. I'm like, I like, why am I even in this position? <laughs> like, I just feel like mm. I would feel so out of place, like doing it, even though I feel like I have the vision and like the mentality, which I feel like is pretty much everything. I just think maybe the, the, the confidence in the moment is what I lack. And I, I think that's, what's kind of scaring me away from it. Um, mm -hmm. but I would definitely love to direct more. Uh, I think creative directing is where I feel most comfortable now because I can pretty much do it all behind like a screen or on the phone, which is, nice but getting to the actual day of like being on set and like everybody's looking to me like <laughs> I'm the one that's like making the whole thing move and like calling the shots like everybody's standing still waiting for me to call the shots like that like gives me anxiety just thinking about but it's definitely like somewhere I would love to be in the future for sure I mean yeah most like pretty much all the concepts anyways for the music videos that like we've done and have been doing like have been neither my or America's ideas. So it definitely would make sense, I guess, for me to direct them. But yeah, I think I'm just scared to be honest. Mm. No other way around that. But yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, yeah, did, sorry, did you direct uh, just you or did America help with the, what is that song? NBD. The, NBD. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, America and I like initially had like talked about kind of the concept together. Um, and then come day of, you know, shooting, it was definitely like, I would say half and half, like me and America, he, he's definitely good at like, um, like being the voice, I guess. Like mm. I, I, like I said, I'm, I feel like I'm timid, which is definitely something I I'm like actively working on, but he's very good at just like 
saying things how they are and like not holding back and not being afraid. So I feel like there were moments where I would like say, oh my God, like we need to be doing this, this and that. And then America would like instantly say it and people would listen. So that, Mm. that kind of teamwork aspect was really, really nice, um, for that specific shoot. Um, but yeah, I would say it was pretty 50, 50 for that one. Yeah. And were you directing or were you like, uh, the DP as well, like holding the camera and everything like that? Um, I was not, we, so we, um, are friends with, so America's VJ actually went to, um, I think it was, what's like the massive school here. I know there's a ton of massive schools. It's like the California state university. Yeah, that's right. That Yeah. That, CSU. That, yeah, yeah. So he went there and like did film, um, two of his friends actually, but one of which is his VJ now. And they knew like a ton of people that were just like, you know, looking for work. So we got like our grip guy from there and our DP from there and just some lighting guys from there. So, um, yeah, we just hired one of his friends, um, to be the DP. So that was cool. We actually shot it on a Sony a seven S two. So dude, that was cool. That's so amazing. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. So just yeah. kind of built out our own little, little crew. Um, and it was really cool. Definitely. Yeah. I saw it. I saw it, I don't know how many years it's been out, but I saw it when it first came out uh, Mm -hmm. maybe a year ago. I don't know. Um, Yeah, it was like a year and a half ago. A shot, like the shot of like him walking down uh, the hallway right out of the hotel room and like Mm -hmm. it's a zoom and also like a tilt of the Mm -hmm. camera on his face as he's walking towards the camera. Like that has stuck with me since. And like, Oh wow. Thank you so uh, much. Such a good video. Such a good video. So good job. It means a lot to me. I I'm like so shy about my work, (laughs) like so shy, like painfully shy, but that, that means a lot to me for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, cool. So did we already touch upon, uh, wrapping this up? I want to ask you a few questions um obviously (laughs) hence (laughs) why i brought you on here um where where do you so so we hit on like what you're doing now and like Mm -hmm. do you have any ideas for the future but like do you see yourself in the future in like a certain role like do you still want to be doing video and photo or do you want to like get more into a concrete role uh where where do you see yourself in your career that's a good question. It's something that I definitely think about often. And I don't know if I have like a solid answer. Um, I do really like the role of creative director. Mm -hmm. Um, but I also like being directed sometimes. And that's something that I've learned just working with Westbrook. Like I thought for so long, I was like, I love being in charge. I love calling the shots and then kind of being in that position. I was like, wow, it's actually really nice to not be told what to do, but just to also have direction for myself. So, um, I, I don't know, like I definitely, I love working with Westbrook. So I'm hoping obviously that that goes for as long as, as possible. I love being in the creative director role for Americo. And I think it'd be cool, um, maybe to take on that creative director role, maybe for another artist, um, Mm. or just doing, yeah, just coming up with some concepts for other artists or another artist. I think it's really fun, like just to work like with girls, like other kind of female artists. So I I don't know, like I said, I'm really shy. So I think that's sort of a big stepping stone I'm going to need to take is just sort of reaching out to people. Um, that's something I'm not, I'm not very good at. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be really cool to work with like another female artist and sort of do a similar thing to what I'm doing with America right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th- I think that's probably where I see myself. I don't know. Like I've also like thought about like photojournalism, just like in general, like I don't know what exactly I would want to do, but I just think that job is really cool. Just mm. kind of documenting things for maybe like a magazine or, um, you know, online um, publications as well. Like, I usually don't really like like posed photography as much as I like just kind of walking down a street and just sort of seeing what I find. So that's why I sometimes think maybe like photojournalism would be cool. I don't know. There's so many, there's so many routes to take. It's pretty crazy. Like, 
I, I don't know, I guess just sort of seeing where it takes me, but yeah, creative director is, is cool for sure. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, um, besides photography, film, whatever, like, mm -hmm. do you have another creative outlet, uh, to get away from those things like and also do those things does film and photography become work after a while or is it still mm. you know a new fresh thing to you that's a good question um i think i'll answer kind of the second half of that first okay. um i think and i've noticed over the years that it definitely is starting to feel like work which is sort of a bummer but i'm relearning to make it not feel like work, I yeah. guess, which is also kind of an exciting part of it. Um, because at the beginning, like, like I said, I had a 60 D and I had a nifty 50 and that was it. And I didn't even feel like I needed anything else at that time. Right. <laughs> and now yeah. I have however many cameras, film cameras, VHS cameras, eight millimeter cameras. Like, you know, I have my, my one DX Mark II, which is like my go-to camera. And it's like this heavy ass camera that like, isn't easy to like take around like mm -hmm. so, I, so like I'm such a simple person especially when it comes to like photography like you know I I know what I need to know about like the technology part of it but that stuff I feel takes away from the actual art of photography for me and any any of the art that I make like too much of the tech stuff just overwhelms me so Sometimes I feel like with my huge camera, I'm like, oh my God, this is like so much going on. Like I miss just having this tiny little camera with one lens and that was it. And I would just see what I came up with and just no pressure, um, no expectations, like edit and color it however looks cool. And that was sort of it. So I'm kind of relearning how to get back to that place of just like take photos just because you love taking photos, not because... Um, you know, there doesn't need to be like an end result, I guess, is, is what I'm sort of trying to, to battle is like, there doesn't always have to be an end result. It doesn't always have to be like for something, you know, if mm. I take a photo of like a wall, let's say whatever, like I, I doesn't <laughs> have to be like the Mona Lisa, like I don't have to frame it in my house. Like it, even if it sits on my memory card, like at least I took it, at least I have it. And it yeah. felt good to take it in the moment because I thought it was cool. And I think that's why I like my iPhone so much lately is it's so accessible. I always have it in my pocket, obviously. If I see something cool, just like flying, let's say, you know, I love clouds. Like I'll take a photo of a cloud with my phone and I still get that same, you know, sensation of like, oh my God, that's so cool. I can't wait to edit this as I would like with my camera. Mm. But like the camera is just so heavy and bulky. Like, you know, I, I don't necessarily hold on to it during the flight. It's like up in my backpack. So the whole process of like going to get it and like holding it. And it's like the shutter is so loud, like all this stuff, like <laughs> I, just like the iPhone has just really been such a tool for me recently. And mm. I also have, um, like a Leica DSLR, uh, not DSLR, like a Leica camera as well. The, the Q2, the digital camera, which is really cool. Cause it's very small. So that sort of helped me kind of bring that joy back into having a smaller camera and just being able to shoot, whatever you know and not having that commitment of like a huge camera on my side you know yeah wait so, so like a q2 does that have uh, a screen on the back it does yes okay cool yeah yeah yeah, yeah what that, lens do you have on that um it's a fixed 35 i believe okay let's see it's like a q2 I'm like 80% sure it's a fixed 35. Okay. It's a fixed 28. Okay. It's still really dope though. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, but yeah. And then the first, qu what was the first question? I'm blanking. On the first the question was like, uh, do you have any other creative outlets when you're not doing photo and video and, uh, creative direction directing? Right. Um, like, have you ever wanted to get into music? N not like making music, but I like, obviously, <laughs> love music. Like, that's an obvious, but like, <laughs> you know, it's like finding cool tracks and just sort of sitting on Spotify and like, Americo has like a playlist on, on Spotify. So like a lot of the times I'll help him find like songs. So that's like mm. 
you know, soothing just to look at like the related artists and then just sort of end up on a page that, you know, just that you wouldn't really expect to land on and then just like find some cool music. Um, so I like doing that, but again, it sort of leads back to work. <laughs> so I'm mm. like wondering, <laughs> I, I'm like such a, like, I love just like sitting and watching YouTube videos. Like I like watching like like literally within the past like two weeks, I've just been like binging on like makeup and like skincare stuff on YouTube. Like it's so satisfying, <laughs> but it just gets my mind off of things. Like I love watching like shitty TV. Like I, that probably sounds terrible, but like, no. like I love like 90 day fiance on TLC is like my favorite show. <laughs> oh my like, God. It's so bad, but it's so good. Like I've just <laughs> always been a per- been a person where it's like, the dumber the show, like the easier it is to just get my mind off of whatever is going on. Like there's no Mm. commitment. Like I can just watch it and not get stressed and you know, it is what it is. So shows like that, um, you know, that there was a really cool show on Netflix recently that I watched. I think it's called abstract. I don't know if you've seen that. Oh, I love that. It's like the documentary with different artists. Yes. That was, it was amazing. I I like, that inspired me a lot. Cause I, I was able to see, you know, there was an episode on this woman that's like a graphic designer in New York. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. Like she, you know, she was older. I think she was like 65 or maybe even older, but she was like still, you know, the head honcho at whatever company it was. And that was really cool to see. And just like people designing like type still, and it takes like two years to come up with like a type design, like just yeah. watching stuff like that is just really cool to me i hope they come out with another season yeah love, like yeah. did you see the stage design one yes uh, with with yeah. s devlin the Dude. the woman that did the weekend right yeah so amazing incredible yeah i love that show yeah so cool. i really hope they come back with the season three <laughs> I, I will be there watching <laughs> <laughs> yeah um awesome so uh just finishing it up uh mm-hmm. three more questions i yeah, think yeah of course just just to give you a heads up um what is the most non-technical skill like unrelated to photography film editing coloring uh that has been the most uh significant to you in your career can you repeat the beginning of the question i'm sorry i just yeah. spaced out for a second sorry <laughs> <laughs> totally okay what is the most important non-technical skill uh okay. to your career oh, so okay. excluding uh learning how to do a camera just mm-hmm. yeah um that's a great question um i think it's something that like i'm still learning like how to be good at but just like patience overall mm. is huge um like huge huge because you're dealing with so many different people with so many different personalities and so many it's it's very like stop and go. Like you have to just be able to sort of adapt to that and not get bummed out or frustrated or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and also just, like I said, I'm still dealing with this, but just not putting like so much pressure on yourself, I guess Mm. is huge. Um, I think I would be a lot less stressed out if I would just stop holding these like super high expectations um, on myself, you know, Mm. I, I won't even like start on something because I'm like, well, what if it doesn't turn out how I want? Like, that's sort of the position that I'm in right now for, for personal work. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm still working through, but definitely something that I hope to get better at for sure. But that's a huge, um, skill for, for anyone creative for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I don't start things because, In my mind, I already go to the end result and I don't like it. So uh, why even try or, (laughs) uh, but, but, you know, I'm getting better at like when I find something challenging or a resistance to something just to do it anyways. Um, Yeah. And why not? Uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I notice like if there's tasks that I'm like kind of nervous about or whatever, like the second you start, like it becomes 10 times more easier just because <laughs> you're starting. like, and then I notice like an hour goes by and I'm like, Oh, I'm like doing this. Like I'm yeah. actually doing it. Like, yeah. all right. Two more questions. Um, yeah. 
what would be so to all the people out there like looking and admiring your work like wanting to be in the same position or reach to like the same position that you have with like Mm -hmm. directing and photography um what would be your best advice to them what would be my best advice to them i mean looking back like i feel like i just want to shave off the past three years you know just to answer that question because the beginning is absolutely what helped me get to where I am today, Mm. regardless of, you know, America being my boyfriend or not. Like I could have met somebody else and we would have obviously just been friends or whatever. And I could have had the same role I have. So, but Mm. just literally reaching out to people and putting yourself out there and DMing people. Like, I feel that it's so cliche, but that's literally how I got to where I'm at 100%. You know, if I never DM'd Caesar and was like, hey, I love your work, you know, can I ask you a couple questions? Like, I feel like I wouldn't have, you know, been where I am today 100%. Like, he put me onto that Steve Aoki show. He answered so many of my questions and gave me so much great advice and just, you know, gave me inspiration when it came to coloring and finding my style Um, and just like working at it and finding what you like and finding your own style. Um, I copied so many people just like internally just to try to find how they got to where they're at and then used that, you know, to create my own style, whether that be color grading, whether it be, you know, video editing, like just taking inspiration from the people that you look up to, um, is, is huge in order to find your own style. Um, And yeah, just like not giving up. I mean, you know, you might have to hold your, you know, regular day job for a while until you can actually do this as a full-time career, but it's, it's definitely worth it. I mean, I worked at restaurants for like, you know, that was like my first, one of my first jobs because I did snowboard instructing, but I worked at a pizza restaurant for like two, three years. And then I was a hostess until I was fine. I, I moved out to California, but you know, on weekends I would take the train to New York and and come back on Sunday and then, you know, be at work on Monday. So, you know, just persevering through that and just, you know, trying to make those, those real connections, you know, cause I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are, um, I don't know, just like trying to make connections with like anybody they absolutely can. And I just feel that what helped me the most was like really honing in on the people that I look up to and, and trying to create a relationship with them, you know, versus just any single person that's like in the industry or whatever, just like your relationship with them and it not really going anywhere, you know, find, find your people, you know, that's, that's huge. Beautiful. So what I heard you say is patience, persistence, practice, focus, and yeah, yeah, find your people. I love that. Yeah. Find, find the right people, good influences you know, people that inspire you, that, that cheer you on. That's, that's huge for sure. Yeah. Beautiful. And last question that I have for you is, um, you're on your deathbed Mm -hmm. and you can only take one thing and it can be a memory. It can be an object. It can be a person. Eh, I don't know. Uh, (laughs) it can be anything you want. Um, what would you want to take? Oh my gosh, that's so hard. It can it can be a memory. Yeah. Mm. Probably any memory that I would have where it's Americo and my whole family, including my grandma, together. I think the last time we did that was I think this past May. Just any mm. any memory. There's a few memories that I have of that, but but those are really nice. Wouldn't it? When it's just my whole family and America together, that's where I feel the most safe, like everybody's there, you know, nothing, nothing can hurt us. And then it's just super peaceful. So definitely one of those memories for sure. Mm. Family is everything for sure. Beautiful. Yeah. I want to thank you for uh, spending your time with me today uh, (laughs) in our stay in place uh, orders. Um, Yeah. yeah, Thank you for inspiring me on a, daily weekly basis Thank with you. your instagram and posting and your work uh it never ceases to like amaze me well, so, uh, so much. please keep going um thank you. yeah and thank I you so will. much for having me on or for coming on <laughs> <laughs> same thing no yeah of course yeah. So much for, for thinking of me and and reaching out um this was awesome of course thank you yeah. thank you